and retired for three or four years before I actually took the program. The cutting edge of landscaping is sharpened at NBCC Woodstock. I couldn't take the stuff I learned in my first year university and use it for work. Train your voice and your mind to work in the exciting world of radio news. I don't know if anybody told you this, but I was diagnosed with cancer two weeks before going to school. And hear the story of one woman who beat the odds, including cancer. Hi, I'm Michael McDonald. And I'm Jill Constantine. Welcome to Achieving Success Alumni Showcase. Today, we will take a look at some of the accomplished graduates of New Brunswick Community College programs. After spending a year in university, journalism graduate Angela Ferguson realized she was not on the right path. Jill Constantine looked at how college became the right choice. Angela Ferguson spends her days working at Woodstock's radio station as news director. Before she got the job, Angela attended NBCC and found it to be more valuable than her year at university. I couldn't take the stuff I learned in my first year university and use it for work. Um, with college, if I couldn't write that newspaper article, if I couldn't do that radio documentary, um, if I couldn't shoot that video, I wasn't going to graduate. With college preparing her for the workforce, Ferguson was offered a job straight out of her second internship. She got a job in her own community at the Heartland Observer. From there, she went to the Bugle in Woodstock. She's a good writer. She's got a strong uh, writing talent, uh, very, very strong in grammar and English. Uh, she's also an extremely organized person and uh, a person that uh, gets things done. After working at the Bugle, Angela was offered a job at the radio station as news director. A job that is usually given to someone who has been in the field of work longer. So it was a huge learning curve um, because you can learn to write an interview but to actually run a whole newsroom is different. Ferguson says the college gave her the chance for a better education. It got her into the workforce more quickly, and she was better prepared with hands-on training. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Taking photos might be something you do as a pastime, but at NBCC, you can turn that pastime into a career. Ashley Dunbar examined the Digital Photography Program. The Digital Photography Program has been a success for seven years now. <laughs> Students who come to NBCC learn the skills they need to become an entry-level imaging technician. Uh, essentially, it's a one-year course. Um, what we do is we prepare students to work in the, uh, primarily the portrait industry. That's our biggest industry in New Brunswick. But, um, you know, the nice thing about photography is, is once you learn how to use the camera, learn the basics, it opens up all types of photography. Several of the photography students have started their own business. Amber Salmon graduated in 2008. She enjoyed the hands-on training that was offered. I really liked the class sizes. They were small, so you had a lot of one-on-one -on -one with your instructor. They knew, uh, they noticed if you weren't there, you weren't just a number, you were an actual person, and they knew what was going on with you and all of your work. So I really liked that aspect of the school. Salmon discovered her love for photography early on. Um, I got into it in high school and knew I wanted to take a course for photography somewhere and this one just happened to catch my interest, catch my attention. Somebody told me about it. So. One thing students like about the digital photography program is they can launch themselves into a career in only one year. Students say learning the basics of the camera is both fun and easy. In Woodstock, Ashley Dunbar, Community College News. This show is produced entirely by journalism students. We wanted to tell you a little bit more about our program. Jess Stairs and Kyle DuPont spent the day looking at our course. We all walked into the doors of the school this year with no idea of what to expect. We may not even have known what encompasses being a journalist. On the first day of class, we are told we are now journalists, and every day we are learning something new, furthering our careers. MBCC Woodstock is home to the next generation of journalists. Every week, the students come together to work on their news stories for print, radio, and television. The morning meetings that we have from Monday to Friday are the, the concept behind it is to try to mimic the reality of the newsroom as much as possible. Each morning, the students meet with their instructors for the daily morning meeting. Sitting around a table drinking coffee, students pitch their stories for the week and get feedback to help further their ideas. 
This atmosphere is an attempt to mimic a real newsroom so that when students leave the college for the real world, they are prepared for the life of a journalist. Each week, students are required to submit two to three stories in at least one of the three mediums. Like a real newsroom, deadline day is the most important day of the week. I think that's pretty good. Awesome. A typical morning meeting, the teachers will come in and they'll go around the table and ask everyone what they're doing and they help to help the students decide whether or not their story is good and if they should keep pursuing that idea or they should change it up or what path they could go down with that story to make it better. Alongside working on stories every week, students have a full schedule of classes. In media law, we learn about everything from covering court to their rights as a journalist basically learning how not to get sued. Our other classes give us background information on politics, ethics, and photography to help round out a great reporter. Writing television and radio classes ensure a solid foundation in the basics. The first year student should probably expect to get a certain amount of theory, that you need to get some of the very basic theory, what is news, what, you know, what goes into a television report, what goes into a radio report. And beyond that, I think what they should really expect is to get some hands-on experience because there is nothing like doing as, as a process of learning. This morning I heard an interview on CBC News with Jack... A common skill in all three mediums is the ability to write clearly and concisely for the sake of your audience. I ask you the same really tough questions you asked me. <laughs> okay. You want to pull that door shut? Tell me to get lost. No. No matter what, this industry is always going to require good writers. People who can write stories that are interesting, intriguing, factual. And even though, you know, we've got a blog culture out there too, journalists are going to be the people who you're going to depend on as a reader or as a viewer, a consumer of news, to get it right. Each instructor takes time from their busy schedules to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with each student to go over their stories and help them improve. With a detailed feedback session, the students can bounce ideas off their instructor and ask, where can they improve their skills? I would like to think that the one-on-one -on -one sessions are probably one of the most important things that we can do. Uh, the reason is, is that if I analyze your story on an individual basis, then I can work with you specifically on the things that you have the greatest opportunity to improve. The college maintains ties with media outlets so that students have their opportunity to have their work seen outside the classroom. But we also have connections to um, the Gleaner and the Bugle Observer and now CTV. Um, we've always had connections with Rogers and we've created shows and we continue to create shows. From the day shift? It's a lot more relaxed I find. You know, everybody gets a chance to know each other a lot better than if you were in a class of, you know, let's say 20, 30 people. Small class sizes at the school offer tremendous opportunity for one-on-one -on -one instruction, easy access to instructors, and the chance to develop close relationships with classmates. I think I'll be well prepared. Uh, at times it is stressful, I have to admit, but I think that's a good thing. Each one of us has already taken the steps towards becoming a journalist. The landscape of news is changing, and soon we'll be out there on the front lines contributing our own perspectives to the world of new media. Coming up, hear the story of a woman who battled cancer while attending classes and won. And later, meet an individual who decided to return to college after retirement. Welcome back. If you'd like to see more of our work, visit jschoolnbcc.ca. After working in the trucking industry as a parts clerk, Alta de Merchant wanted a more hands-on career. She turned to NBCC Woodstock to take that step. Michael McDonald has the story. For all of the transport trucks we see on the road every day, we often forget about the people behind the scenes. Alta de Merchant is one of those people. Uh, 
actually I saw an ad in the paper for the transportation management course at Woodstock Community College. I had two teenagers at the time and wanted to go back to school. Leanne McConnell is a manager at McConnell Transport, where DeMerchant works. We hired her far before she even graduated, um, so we knew we had a jewel there and we got her. DeMerchant excelled in college, graduating as valedictorian of her class. She said small class sizes were helpful. It made it easier to have conversations with the instructors and get more in depth if you wanted to on course subjects. DeMerchant and McConnell said community college will help you succeed. When asked if she was where she envisioned herself in the future, DeMerchant gave an interesting answer. Yes and no. I never thought I would go this far, I guess. While college may not be right for everyone, it certainly worked for DeMerchant. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Sandra Ogden Olmsted returned to college as a mature student. At the age of 50, she brought an entirely new dynamic to the classroom. Kyle DuPont reports. Sandra Ogden Olmsted is the executive director at Volunteer Family Services in Woodstock. She graduated from the Human Service Program in 2006 and entered the workforce in full stride. Yes, because I was hired with my practicum. The people that, I, that Scott, uh, that Mr. Ritzy had um, paired me with for my final practicum, I ended up, they just asked me to stay. So I really didn't have to beat the bricks for, for a job in that field. At 50, Sandra was the oldest in her class. Her life experience was beneficial to the learning of the other students. Uh, very often mature students, and this would include Sandra, um, they're not as quick to kind of jump to conclusions about things and, and really tries to see things from different angles. And I would say that that was something that she did. Small class sizes at the college allow for significant one-on-one -on -one interaction between the student and instructor, says Scott Ritzy. It was, I think it was easier for our instructors to either pinpoint problem areas with each individual student that way rather than a big class. Sandra's time here at the college has proved to be successful. She continues to be a cornerstone in the community by helping those less fortunate. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Going to college can be challenging for any student. Imagine you've been diagnosed with a life-threatening disease just before classes begin. Tony Bourgeois met one courageous student whose story has inspired others. Anatasha Lyons graduated from NBCC's Business Administration program back in 2010. She graduated at the top of her class and was the provincial student president. Um, one of the big issues that I wanted as provincial president of NBCC was to get a health care program in place. And Natasha regrets being unable to accomplish these goals while still attending MBCC. She is still in contact with the school and has hopes of getting the health care program in place. She says her instructors gave her a lot of support. They say she was a great student. It was just uh, such a, a joy to have in the class because of her personality and she was just so uh, interested in improving. She touched my heart. She really did. She's a hardworking student, uh, really concerned about other people. She had a child at home. She was trying to plan a wedding. She was trying to get her diploma. Um, and then she came to me and said, I've got cancer. She was diagnosed with cancer two weeks before attending school. When most people would have taken time off or given up, she decided to go ahead with her studies. Cancer free. But I was diagnosed prior to going and I went to all the teachers and told them, listen, this is my goal. I don't want to be treated any differently. Anatasha is now cancer free and is working as an account manager at RBC. Anatasha says she would like to thank her teachers for their support. Her instructors say they are proud of her success. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Coming to college to learn a trade is one thing. Coming back to teach it is another. Just Stairs has more. Carpenters build our homes and our offices. But before that, they come here to develop their skills. Rob Reed is an alumni of the MBCC Woodstock Carpentry Apprenticeship Program. I thought being a carpenter was a great job because it was very gratifying. You know, you build a house for somebody or you, you work on their home and it's their lives and it's a very personal job. Shortly after graduating and starting his own business, Reed got a call from the school. They wanted him to teach budding carpenters, the kind that he himself had once been. 
He's now an apprenticeship instructor, a job he finds just as rewarding as being a working carpenter. The gratification is just great. It's tremendous, really, to see people come through and, and they start at a level and they just build confidence as they go. And by the time they get to the end, it's, you know, it's a very gratifying thing to see them finish. Reed's students say that having a program graduate as their teacher reflects well on the school. It hits at home that NBCC Woodstock is, is uh, producing quality uh, tradespeople to the point where uh, the people that they train are actually coming back and instructing. And uh, he's been very good, been very helpful, very knowledgeable, and uh, patient with those who need patience. Reed is grateful for the opportunity to teach the program he once took. He says the hands-on instruction received at NBCC Woodstock is instrumental in preparing new students for the workforce. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. Coming up, we spoke with a student who has had success in another trade. Welcome back. New Brunswick Community College is home to more than 80 programs, some of which have been featured on today's show. If you're interested in any of them, please visit mbcc.ca. Choosing a career path can be difficult for someone just out of high school, but as Jocelyn Turner reports, finding that dream job might start with thinking about what interested you in shop class. Ben Millard gives a tour of the shop where he prepared for his career as a welder. It was in that classroom that Miller got his start. It just seemed like the right thing to do at high school. I guess I was bored, didn't know what to do, so I said I'll go back to school for another year. Millard says he had some insight from his high school workshops where he was first exposed to welding. There was still a lot to learn, and Miller says the college instructors were thorough. The only thing I didn't really know was how to weld, how to run torches. Doug was a very good instructor on that part. He did his job very well. Doug Budden was one of Millard's instructors. He is very proud with all Millard has accomplished. One of the first fellows to volunteer, whatever the, the task was at hand or whatever the chore was, uh, he was here for a reason. He wanted to learn everything that he could learn. Budden says instructors are always pleased to help students find a career in their chosen trade. Really, that's what it's all about, getting these fellows out working in industry. So I feel really good about it. The fact that he's got a good job uh, with a good employer in the county here. Finding work you enjoy is the first step in landing a job that's right for you. And, like Millard, getting that dream job takes a lot of hands-on training. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. For a mature student with a family, moving away to college may not be an option. With six MBCC campuses, staying in their own community is now easier. Ethan Hazlitt has more. Upon leaving here, they come here uh, September. You're here 40 weeks. And this is the construction electrician course. The electrician course is just one of the many trades offered at MBCC Woodstock. And Greer understands the necessity of a hands-on education. I mean, if you asked anyone in here, they, they would certainly say that, that coming in here in the shop, learning all the different types of material, getting to know how it's used, putting it in place, that would be, uh, I think, the biggest thing for everyone. It's what they enjoy the most. Studying to become an electrician offers students the possibility of advancing in their field. It can also mean the difference between moving their family or not. Stephen Chisholm decided to go to the local college so he wouldn't have to uproot his family. Well, I, just the location is uh, one of the biggest things. I mean, I didn't have to move out of town to, to go somewhere and uh, stay in my own home. For people like Chisholm, it's important to stay in their community, although many young people want to leave home. But for mature people, they're all the more likely to have ties in the community and may not want to leave. For people like, like myself, that really, you know, university isn't an option and uh, it's, you know, it's right in my, the hometown. NBCC Woodstock has helped thousands advance in their careers. And for people like Stephen Chisholm, they've helped them find work in their own communities. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. Some people find their dream job right out of college or university. Others may spend years or decades looking for theirs. For a local school teacher, it took retirement and a leap of faith to find his. Mike Trusiak reports. For many people, retirement is supposed to be a time to sit back and reflect on the hard work they have done. For Terry Hunter, though, it provided an opportunity to pursue his love for landscaping. 
it's something I had considered for, I'd been retired for three or four years before I actually took the program. And I'd looked into the landscape program a time or two. At 59 years old and just four years into retirement, Hunter was a little apprehensive about taking a seat in the landscaping course. I guess for me, going in as somebody, uh, <laughs> a mature student as they say, uh, I, was, I was nervous because I thought, you know, like, I'm going to stand out like a sore thumb here. But it just, age didn't seem to matter, and it, it worked. Although Hunter is semi-retired, he is grateful NBCC Woodstock allowed him to discover and pursue a new interest, one that he is thoroughly enjoying. I mean, I get here around 7 o'clock in the mornings. Terry's generally here waiting or already going, and uh, he'll work. There's no end. I mean, <laughs> he'll just do the job and work till it's done. Hunter was hired by the village of Florenceville right out of college, but wasn't planning on finding a second career. They were in the process of joining to make the town with Florenceville Bristol. So the workload is, was much, much larger the second, third, and this year. And uh, gradually they're, they're just improving things all the time. And I guess I, I like the the area where I work, because when I when I get a job done, why well, I think there that that looks nice, and there's there's a lot of positive reinforcement. People walking by and say you're doing a good job. That looks nice, and and it's surprising how many people notice. So was NBCC Woodstock a good choice for Hunter? Absolutely. In Florenceville, Bristol, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Well, that's our show for today. For more stories by NBCC journalism students, visit jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take one. Hi, I'm Michael McDonald. And I'm Jill Constantine. Welcome to Achieving Success Alumni Showcase. Today, we'll check out some of the accomplished graduates of New Brunswick Community College's programs. <clears throat> Take two. One second. Okay. And a half. Welcome to Achieving Success. A <laughs> Alumni. Remember you're saying welcome. Okay, you're, real, you're welcoming. If you're saying welcome to, to my show. This is someone who's going to pay for your vacation or something. Right. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this show was produced entirely by journalism students. <laughs> Sandra Ogden Olmsted returned to college as a mature student. <laughs> Take five. Sandra Ogden Olmsted returned to college as a mature student. You looked at the same time. Sandra Ogden Olmsted returned to college as a mature student. Oh. Sandra Ogden Olmsted returned to college as a mature student. <laughs> he grinned. Wait, but I'm just going to take a quick drink of water. We spoke with a student who has had success in another trade. I just couldn't handle it. I was like, ugh. Anyway, okay. Well, that's our show for today. <laughs> that's my cue. Well, that's our show for today. Okay, just <laughs> one more time. Well, that's our show for today. For more stories by NBCC journalism students, visit jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. One more. <laughs>